Hi all, my name is Haley Comet and welcome to my cosmic corner of the internet where we discuss all things astrology and today all things Jupiter in Aries 2022 to 2023. What blessings this transit is giving us collectively as well as you, your sun sign, your rising sign. You're going to want to listen to this video because there is a distinct tonal difference between this transit and Jupiter in Pisces in that it's requiring our active participation in it. So there are ways to activate this Jupiterian magic to harness these blessings and these opportunities for our lives. And I'll be breaking it all down in this video, collective as well as sign by sign. Before I do though, if this is your first time to my channel, hello, my name is Haley Comet. I create all sorts of astrology transit videos, education videos, as well as a weekly horoscope series called Magic Monday, where I break down what transits are occurring and more importantly, how you can leverage and activate these energies because I do not believe that we are victims of a cruel and unfriendly cosmos. I do believe that we can co-create with the transits that are at play in order to live our most magical life. So any little nudge of engagement from subscribing, liking, commenting, anything, if you get any value from this video, it just really helps me as a cosmic creator. And without further ado, let's dive in. Jupiter and Aries 2022 to 2023. Firstly, when is this occurring? Jupiter ingresses into Aries May 10th, 2022. It'll continue through the passionate Aries flames until October 27th, 2022, at which point it retrogrades back into the Jupiterian waters to re-enter Aries December 20th, 2022. It stays there until May of 2023, at which point it enters Taurus, bringing a whole new story, whole new opportunities, and a whole new section of your chart that is being activated. So what's this tonal difference that I alluded to? Well, Jupiter was in its domicile in Pisces. It was very comfortable there. It was able to give us all sorts of psychic insights, inspired insights. It was treading through its home territory, right? And there could have been this reinvigoration of hope perhaps there could have been an expansion of emotions there could have been an expansion of your intuitive connection and with it entering airy it is now peregrine which means it is not positive nor negative it is essentially a neutral relationship okay so we're leaving so jupiter's leaving territory where it was like yes pisces escapism dreaming spirituality and it's entering aries and it's like okay i don't love it here but i also don't hate it here i'm cool here so with jupiter being the planet of luck abundance and opportunities with it in aries this is energy that you're going to want to activate especially considering that aries is a very forward direct forthright sign when jupiter is in aries we can harness its blessings when we take action okay because jupiter is answering to mars for the duration of this transit and that means that we unfortunately can't just sit in our homes and dream about it and make it happen. That might have that might have worked while Jupiter was in Pisces, boosting our manifestation abilities. But with Jupiter in Aries, we actually have to physically take action on it. We have to make it happen. We have to shoot our shot, essentially. Jupiter in Aries, shoot your shot, as well as being self-sufficient as well as going after our goals, being bold. That is when we can get the opportunities presented to us while Jupiter is in Aries. It can expand our own independence, our own self-sufficiency. Like a lot of individuals, if you've been in a connection where you're like, I know that it's time for me to go, but I don't know if I can do it on my own. With Jupiter in Aries, it's going to create this rush around believing in yourself and believing in your own agency as an individual, remembering that you are the creator of your life and that you can leave any situation that is not serving you. Aries is the sign of self. So loves, if you have been fearful of taking a risk, you've known you want to take a leap, you've known you wanted to exit a relationship, you know you've wanted to start a business, Jupiter and Aries can bring you this rush of inspiration around finally believing in yourself. 
finally taking that risk. It's scary, but this will give us a rush of positive motivation around finally believing in ourselves, finally believing that we will be better off single, finally believing in our idea enough to finally look up office space, finally figure out what permits we need for our new idea. This energy will ramp up your desire truly with Jupiter transiting this sector. Now, Jupiter and Aries does have a definitive bad side. We'll get to that in a moment, but I really want to highlight this summer, this fall, moving in 2023, shoot your shot. Okay. Go after what it is that you want. If you are fearful of it, you're probably moving in the right direction. Of course, now don't be reckless. That could be sort of the downside of this transit, but I'm talking to the people where it's like, you've known that you want to do this. Jupiter and Aries will give you almost this God complex around, okay, finally, it's time. Okay, let me do this. Let me leave this relationship and go off on my own because it's gonna ramp up self-sufficiency and independence quite a bit. For better and for worse, we'll get to the downside, but I'm highlighting the better for now in that we can finally believe that we might actually be better off on our own, that it might actually be more rewarding of an existence if we are creating our own path rather than living the existence laid out to us by others. There can be certain decisions you make that are unpopular with Jupiter and Aries. Truly let your mantra be to thine own self be true because Aries is the sign of self. It's a sign of our rawest, most instinctive desires. It's a sign of taking risks and it's a sign of taking action. And with Jupiter transiting this section of the sky, it's essentially that our blessings are waiting for us on the other side of our fears. It's going to ask you to take a leap of faith, but it's also going to reward you when you take that leap. The, if you study tarot, the card that I think of is the fool card, where it's like stepping onto this new precipice and almost having this childlike excitement about life again and almost having this energy around, well, I won't know until I try. I won't know until I try to start this business. I won't know until I try to live my life single and see how that feels. And with Jupiter and Aries, we can find that there's a rush around independence, wanting to be our own person, walk our own way, even if that's unpopular with other people. There could be this rush around honest energy, being honest with ourselves, being honest with others. And of course, wherever Jupiter is transiting within your house, that is where taking these risks is the most supportive. That is where being more independent and self-sufficient is most supported. That is where following your rawest, most instinctive desires is most supported. And it also brings this authenticity with it. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is very, I am who I say I am, no false pretenses. Aries energy is not one that fakes the funk, okay? You will know where you stand with Aries placements. So with Jupiter in Aries, this could be the sort of blessings in your life where it's like, I'm sick of putting on a happy face. I'm sick of being around people who drain me. It could be a time of expanding honesty with yourself around what situations are not serving you, what situations you have to wear a mask during, what situations that you just feel drained by being there. Jupiter in Aries is a really great time to follow our energy because it's answering to Mars, which is our physical exertion. So great time to get really active, to exercise, to work out, surely, but also follow the instincts from your body. Like if you get into you know that salon and the, your entire body like tenses up and you just feel the urge to run away, honor that as wisdom. Like Jupiter and Aries is expanding our honesty with ourselves. It's expanding our body awareness as well. It's expanding our energy, which is really nice. So energy to put towards new initiatives, taking new risks, making new things in your life happening, following your instincts, continuing to hone that and having trust in yourself because that's what keeps us a lot of times from taking a leap of faith is around, can I do it? Can I make it to the other side? Am I good enough? Am I strong enough? And with Jupiter and Aries, it's, it's almost like this energy around, yep, I am trusting in your abilities because you have to be your number one cheerleader. This is the energy that's gonna, yes, give you blessings, but only if you're able to A, be radically honest with yourself, that's the Aries energy, as well as have nearly a delusional level of belief in yourself. And yes, those two things can coexist, okay? Oftentimes when we downplay our abilities, we're not being honest with ourselves, right? With Jupiter and Aries, it's like, you know you're good at writing. Pitch the book. You know you have a talent for baking. Open 
the bakery. It's like stop playing with yourself and finally do the thing you've been talking about, essentially. Put it to action, right? This is opportunities arising when we take action. If you just sit in your house all day with Jupiter and Aries, you will not feel this transit, okay? <laughs> so I'm talking to the people who are ready to take a risk, ready to take action in order to create more opportunities within their world. And of course, look where this is transiting your chart to see where these blessings are in store for you. So I'm gonna talk about the downsides of this transit and then I'll take it sign by sign. Okay, so Jupiter is excess and excess isn't always a good thing, right? We think of growth and we're like, yeah, growth. But growth can be a definitive downside. There could be a downside to growth. And with Jupiter and Aries, it can really heighten this individualistic, being out for yourself sort of energy. Like I said, this is gonna be great for individuals who need to center themselves in their lives. They need to start prioritizing themselves, their desires, their needs, their honesty. This transit is gonna be great for those individuals. For some people who might already have a God complex, I mean, that's going to, boom. During this transit, you could have to interact with a lot of people who feel like they are center of the world, right? It's gonna expand our egos a little bit. Aries is the sign of self. There also can be an expansion around anger, okay? It's answering to Mars, the planet of, you know, action and assertion. And that can be great around standing up for yourself, advocating for yourself, but you can see how that can have a definitive downside to it around people being a little bit more reactive, a little bit more knee jerk and impulsivity. With Jupiter and Aries, there can be this energy around being overly impulsive because where Jupiter is transiting, it's essentially where we are being delusionally optimistic. And honestly, when you talk to most entrepreneurs or most successful people, it's like, it takes that level of delusional optimism in yourself to like make something happen. And there's something wrong with that. And again, I encourage that with Jupiter and Aries. What I want you to be mindful of is taking risks and feeling like you are invincible, okay? Like getting behind the wheel when you know you should not like those sort of risks, okay? That is not cool ever, but particularly during this transit, I just feel like this transit is gonna make people feel like they're invincible or that rules do not apply to them. And taking you know, calculated risks is best during this transit. I don't want you to put all your money on you know, the lotto and be like, well, Haley Comet said so. Haley Comet did not say so. Haley Comet said no such thing, calculated risks. Planning out the bakery, then opening the bakery planning out the novel, then selling the novel. Not just trying to, you know, get rich quick at the lottery. Calculated risk. Is it a risk? Yeah. You could write the novel and realize no one wants to buy it. You could open the bakery and, and realize that you're barely breaking even each month. And then from there, you can always like adjust accordingly. But even that, it's not a waste of time. You're still going to learn, right? But it's a risk. It is a risk. And you have to get comfortable with your fears because Jupiter and Aries will help you in being more fearless. Sure, it'll help you in taking the risk, but it is important to acquaint yourself with your fears, okay? And realize that it's not the end of the world. If the baker doesn't work out, if the novel doesn't work out, you're gonna learn in the process, you're gonna get closer to your purpose. There's a reason why that needed to happen. I do wanna highlight that last time we had a Mars ruled Jupiter transit was Jupiter and Scorpio, which, I think every astrologer remembers this day because literally the day Jupiter entered Scorpio was the day the Harvey Weinstein stuff broke and all of the Me Too movement broke. Okay, the first day we were like, okay, <laughs> wow, Jupiter and Scorpio is quick because Jupiter expands what it goes through. With Scorpio, it brings up those themes, right? And I cannot say it for monetization purposes, but it expands those themes. And Mars co-rules Scorpio and Aries in traditional astrology. There can be certain themes from that period of time and from that particular movement that are echoed in this. And with Jupiter and Aries, it's the same thing around Jupiter is expanding these principles and perhaps bringing them to the collective's awareness around Aries, which could be masculinity, around violence, around ego, individualism. There can be an expansion around these themes that we can expect collectively.
Okay, love, so let's break it down sign by sign. I want you to listen to your sun and your rising sign. Rising sign is the main one and sun to a lesser degree. We would use solar houses for that, which could also have some relevance for your life as well. So let's start with Aries sun and rising because as you can imagine, you guys are the main characters of this transit, but you guys are kind of always the main characters. You guys are the first sign in the zodiac, but especially with this transit. So loves, with this impacting either your actual houses or solar houses, your first house. And it's expanding that realm of your life. So you can find that you are feeling more like yourself. You're feeling more bold, you're feeling more confident, you're feeling more courageous, you're more in the mood to be seen and to be visible. You can find that you are really enjoying be being more attractive, doing your hair, doing your outfits, doing your makeup, however it is that you like to express yourself physically, there could be an expansion of it, like really wanting to invest in your wardrobe really noticing how much you know positive attention you get when you do invest that time and energy into your appearance you can find that you just have this confidence that is magnetic during this trance around people noticing you paying more attention to you for some individuals there can be a drive to want to be taking get a better care of your body wanting to be looking good feeling good with jupiter on the first house as well you could just be feeling more optimistic about life you're looking at your life and you're just seeing opportunity you're like wow i could invest energy here and this could work out like your confidence levels will feel at a high and there's also like this Midas like energy where you could feel like what it is that you touch turns to gold at this time. And while that's amazing, I do want to mention that you can be overly optimistic at this time. Like we love optimism and honestly, it's like low key a self-fulfilling prophecy for you all during this transit. You're going to like expect good results and then they come because you expect them. But I just want to convey that Jupiter can be a downside in that it's where we can go to access. So with Jupiter in the first house, it's not uncommon that people can can eat more, indulge more, drink more. The, the, the good vibes are amazing, but it can lead you to go to excess, whether it's with just your experience of life, your experience of food, your experience of drink. There could just be this energy of like more, 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 more that I just want you to keep in check and putting that optimism towards projects that you really want to see ignite and using the positive energy, like seriously, put yourself out there, allow yourself to be visible and allow yourself to realize that beauty and attractiveness can be a weapon, Aries Risings. I know that sounds dramatic, but truly there is something to be said about the way that we psychologically experience people when they look good. It's, it's odd. You could say that it's shallow, but it's a weapon. And I say it's a weapon because this is a Jupiter ruled Mars. You could realize that you are more likely and more able to get your way when you chisel that weapon, right? When you notice how it is that you put yourself together and what sort of results it yields. Wow, interviews go better when I wear my hair like this. Wow, everyone at that party asked me out when I did this. Wow, I just started this new exercise routine and now it's yielded these results. Like noticing that and continuing to chisel that, it is not shallow. And again, part of it is a confidence thing in that you're just feeling more magnetic so you show up as that way. But for some people, you could be investing more time and energy into the way that you look as well as really feeling more confident on your own. I mean, you guys really don't typically need help in that department, love, because you are such an independent sign. But during this transit, you can really be believing your own abilities and your own ability to be the agent of your own reality, the creator of your own reality. My Taurus suns and risings, this transit impacts your 12th house. So for you loves, where this expansive energy is, is taking place is around your subconscious. And I would really implore you all to really dig deep. I mean, your guys' charts have been lit up, right? With all these eclipses, it's gonna continue to be that. But I really want you to dig deep to unearth any inner messages around how it is that you talk to yourself and whether or not you believe in yourself and believe in your own abilities and whether you convince yourself, like if you go to take a risk or you go to like ask someone out or wherever else, if you convince yourself, oh no, they would never be into you or like go to, you know, ask for that promotion. No, you're not good enough. With Jupiter in Aries in the 12th house, it really is this deep dive under 
understanding how is it that I talk to myself and do I hide my impulses? Do I hide my, my raw instincts? Do I never take risks because of how it is that I talk to myself? And is there any like trauma associated with it or any healing that's needed associated with that messaging? With Jupiter in the 12th house in Aries, this could also be a really positive time around taking action towards your healing, like realizing like, hey, if I just, relax all of the time. That's great. I'm a Taurus. I'm pretty chill, but I'm not going to be able to move forward from my wounds. And with Jupiter and Aries, it is asking us to take action, to be proactive. And for you, when it comes to your healing journey, as well as feeling more comfortable in solitude with Jupiter and Aries in your 12th house, this is an energy that's going to ask you to feel comfortable and confident in your own space. Again, you're doing this deep inner work. So like a lot of you are sort of being less accessible for other people to reach you. And that's beautiful love. So like, I want you to lean into that influence and I want you to protect your peace. I want you to do that deep inner work. And I want you to realize that solitude and isolation mean the same thing, right? But there's a different energy infused into it. Isolation suggests that it's been forced upon you, whereas solitude indicates the spiritual peace that is found when you are comfortable in your own presence, when you are comfortable dulling the noise of the external world to tune in, to truly get to know yourself from the inside out. This can also be a helpful time around any sort of spirituality work. If you've been wanting to connect with the other side, if you've been wanting to be proactive about learning more about dream interpretation, mediumship, this can be a positive rush of energy around finally putting those desires and centering them. My Gemini suns and risings, you all are having Jupiter in Aries, either transiting your 11th house or transiting your 11th house in solar houses. So loves, this is an expansion. You guys are gonna like this, my social butterflies. This is expanding your social networks of all sorts. And it's gonna ask you to be more active around them. Like if there's someone who's so cool on Insta and you just like are constantly sliding into each other's DMs, like reacting to each other's stories, and you just, need to like take that instinct and like just ask them to hang out. This is the transit that's asking you to put in some physical, tangible effort towards securing those friendships, okay? And securing your dreams as well. Like because 11th house, yes, it's friendship. So great time to be proactive around this person looks so cool. I want to connect with them. This person is doing my dream job. Let me ask if they'll grab a coffee. Being very proactive around getting in the room of the people who inspire you, the people who feel like-minded. 11th house is also hopes and dreams. Our own as well as for the collective, for the future. So this could be a really positive time around taking action. Like, hey, I'm really stressed out about climate change. How can I take action to secure our future as a world? Hey, I'm really passionate about X, Y, and Z. How can I take action to ensure that that's the future that we're moving towards. It could be collective like that. It could be stepping up as a leader, believing in your own abilities to lead an organization of like-minded individuals. It could be finally starting to post that content that you've been scared to post because you're scared people are gonna judge you. Jupiter in Aries is the time to be shameless. It's the time to be bold around what people are gonna say. Anything that can get you in the orbit of those you wanna connect with and those who are like-minded is supported during this transit. And with Jupiter and Aries, I just also wanna highlight that yes, it's collective dreams, but it's also your own dream. So it could be energy around, okay, I've always, 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 always dreamt of doing this. I can either say one day, one day, one day, or I can say day one. This is the first day I'm doing this. And Jupiter and Aries is your day one. I've always wanted to learn French. Maybe one day, maybe one day, Jupiter and Aries like, nope, day one. Duolingo, where you at? <laughs> Let me start. Seriously, with this, this is a really positive time around getting closer to your dreams and taking action and finally believing in yourself. Whether it's your own dreams or the dreams that you have for the collective, getting in the room with people who are influential, putting yourself out there into the people you wanna be in the orbit with. Gemini, Suns and Rising, this is the time for it. And if you're feeling shy, I totally understand. I mean, with everything going on, I know a lot of us feel sort of like social awkward. Probably not you guys, because you guys are such social butterflies, but with Jupiter and Aries, it really is about being bold, about telling people, like not being shy around, you know, telling people, hey, I've written this book. 
hey, I started this organization. Like getting in the room with people, even if you're tired, you know, after work being like, okay, this business happy hour has everyone that I want to connect with. Let me just take action. Let me be bold. Let me go up to the people. Like this is the energy where you can reap so many blessings because Jupiter is in its joy. I mean, natally, it's in its joy in the 11th house. You can reap a lot of blessings, but it's up for you to take action in order to make it a reality. But I believe in you, Gemini, suns and risings. Cancer, suns and risings. So you all are having this energy in your 10th house, either physical houses or solar houses. And 10th house is all about career, public persona, reputation, how it is that you are seen in the limelight essentially and you're like i'm a cancer i'm a crab i'm more comfortable within my shell okay so sure but this is a transit that's gonna enact that's gonna require you to be bold it's gonna require you to put yourself out there you know that reach job that one that you're like not me i don't know if i'm really qualified apply i mean don't lie on your resume but shoot your shot you know, this is the time to believe your, believe in yourself because that's how honestly a lot of people succeed is that they just, they just try, try their persistent, right? And this is sort of transit where you can yield powerful results when you assert yourself, advocate for yourself and go for it. And that's another theme that I want to make sure I highlight for you all is taking action when it comes to securing opportunities for yourself and asserting yourself. So if it's like, you know you're being underpaid, you know you're underqualified, you know this role is beneath you. This is sort of energy around being able to proactively approach a boss or authority figure and, and saying, you know, with, with, with the results of what you've done, saying, I need to be in this position, like this is the market rate for the role, like, and it's gonna be scary, you know, with Jupiter and Aries, for us to reap these results, we have to be willing to assert ourselves and advocate for ourselves to our bosses, to our authority figures. For some Cancer Suns and Risings, if there's been a situation that's draining you of your power, especially in the workplace, this is sort of energy around reigniting your ability to advocate for yourself, particularly there, and being able to rise up to new levels within your career, within your public persona. If you are unhappy in your career or you're like, Haley Comet, what career are you talking about? This could be a positive time around putting in resumes, around putting feelers out, around being bold enough to realize if your field is not serving you, being bold enough to put feelers out within a new sector, within a new domain. This is the time to take into account where it is that you want to go. What is it that you want to be known for? Oh, I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do that. This is sort of transit where you're getting this once in 12 year opportunity to just go for it, to just go for it. The cosmos are meeting you off halfway, but it's asking you to put in that effort to advocate for yourself and to be bold and to go after it. This also speaks to higher visibility as well as 10th house is how you are seen within the public eye. So there can be an energy during this where you can yield positive results if you dare to put yourself out there. You know, start posting content, start putting out that blog, that podcast, whatever it is that you feared making public, this could be a transit where you could yield a lot of positive results and really be visible to a whole new level. Leo, suns and risings, loves this transit is impacting your ninth house of travel, higher education, and spirituality. Okay, so let's talk about that trip that you've always wanted to take. Okay, let's talk about it because Leos have been under the fire lately. I mean, at the time of filming this, there's all these eclipses and they have Saturn in their opposite sign. There is a lot transpiring for these lions. So with Jupiter and Aries, it's sort of this energy around perhaps like a victory trip. Like you guys have been doing so much work, honestly, where it's like you've always dreamt about going to Bali. One day, one day, one day. You've always wanted to go to Switzerland. One, one day, one day, one day. Wherever it is that you're like, one day I'll do that. You know, one day, one day. Dreams die in one day, okay? Dreams just end in one day. You need to be proactive and make it happen. This is such a brilliant time to travel. I also wanna highlight for some Leo Suns and Risings, this can be a time that you are contemplating grad school, getting a master's, getting a PhD, anything of the nature. This could be really supportive and you can really yield positive results when you expand that sector of your life. Some Leo Suns and Risings are really gonna feel this lovely expansion when it comes to their spiritual world. There could be this energy around 
I really want to go on this meditation retreat. I really want to understand Buddhism better. I really want to go back to my roots of the religion I used to practice. With Jupiter in Aries, there can be a really positive expansion in it and a drive to just go for it, to follow our instincts, to be able to take action on what it is that we believe in. And since this is a fire sign, there this is helpful because it's going to try in your Leo placements. So doors are going to open which prior, you know, were shutting in your face. Of course, if you do have Leo in the later degrees, you'll probably still be experiencing a Saturn transit. So that could be dominant within your world, but just know the Saturn transit is ending soon, loves. So if you've gotten your Saturn work done early and you're looking forward to this Aries transit, it's going to try in your Leo placement and you're going to feel this rush of the big picture of your life making more sense, of feeling more connected to your sense of faith, of feeling more connected to something bigger than yourself, feeling more connected to other people, other cultures. Like this really is such a lovely time to travel love. So I would really recommend get a trip on the books if you can apply for that reach master's program, that reach college. Like this is a time to assert yourself, advocate for yourself, particularly as it comes to education, like apply to that reach college. Like you're like, I'll never get into Stanford. Maybe you will. This is the energy about shooting your shot. And for you shooting your shot when it comes to your education, when it comes to your spirituality and when it comes to travel. My Virgo suns and risings, Jupiter is expanding your eighth house either by houses or by solar houses. And eighth house has to do with shared income and assets. So for some Virgo suns and risings, your spouse could be getting an income. There could be an increase of money coming to you from other people. So some sort of like passive income or like some sort of investments finding yielding back alimony, child support, any money that comes to you from other people, there's gonna be this rush coming in. As well as for some Virgo suns and risings, there can be this expansion around really contemplating your own legacy, which sounds sort of dark and intense. I mean, eighth house is death. There could be this energy around, okay, one day I am going to no longer be on this planet. How can I make peace with that? How can I live the life that I want to do now? How can I take the risk that I want to do now so I don't have any regrets when my time has come, when I'm you know, on my final bed, where I go, Betty bye. <laughs> How can I be proactive in creating my life so I don't have any regrets or just making peace with the fact that you're no longer gonna be on this planet? Are you going to pass away with this feeling of, oh, I wish I would've taken that risk. I wish I would've done that thing. And with Jupiter in the eighth house, this would be a positive time to illuminate how safe or unsafe you feel surrendering into support from other people. Lots of Virgo suns and risings, you guys like to do it all yourself. So this energy can be asking you, do you feel safe accepting support from other people? Do you feel safe allowing people to support you, whether that's to a financial level? Do you feel safe allowing the universe to support you? Can you take risks knowing that the universe has your back? And this is gonna be interesting transit for you all because Virgo suns and risings tend to be control freak. And this is a transit that's going to really ask you to release control. It's really going to ask you to sort of like take a risk and trust that your partner has you, trust that the universe has you, trust that a bigger plan has you, and to really have to surrender control and to really like lean into what your life is evolving to be. For Libra suns and risings, this is expanding your seventh house. And with it, there can be this rush of magnetic energy when it comes to one-to-one -to -one contacts. For my single Libra sun and risings, you can absolutely find someone that you are strongly attracted to. Almost just think of like, just bodies like magnets, just pulled to one another, right? Because Aries is our spark. It's our, it's our instinct. It's our very sort of almost animalistic attraction to one another, just being pulled towards one another. When Jupiter and Aries, this is really the time to put yourself out there and to really allow your body to tell you wisdom around what people you know, you feel drawn to, you're like, I want to get next to that person. I want to talk to that person and what people you feel tense around or your body sort of like locks up and what people, what people you just feel more open and more relaxed, honor that wisdom, honor who it is you feel pulled to and also honor like the Aries, like spirit in love. Like if you are single, you know, and wanting a long-term companion, this is a great time for 
you know, putting yourself out there, going on dates and sort of like thriving from that banter, maybe taking risks with your partner, going on some sort of like fun date that's sort of risky. I'm trying to think of an example. Skydiving feels too intense for a date, gambling or something of the nature, but don't, don't spend too much. But anyways, just getting into that energy around it being fun to date again, right? Having that energy of, because Aries is a very pure, uncomplicated sign, right? It almost brings in these themes of just like childlike fun. And it's expanding your seventh house, whether you are single, so you're looking for someone to be with, or you're committed, inspiring that fun into your connection again, like having interesting, novel, new experiences together. Yeah, doing something risky together, whether it's skydiving or getting a tattoo or, or something of that nature, obviously be calculated about it. You know, don't do those things randomly, but it sort of asks you to invigorate your unions with a little bit more fun, with a little bit more fire. So for some individuals, I will say, we think of Jupiter as all positive all the time, but Jupiter can be a downside at times. Jupiter is freedom. So with Jupiter in the seventh house, there can be this energy around if you are in a relationship where the spark has you know died out your body doesn't feel you know lit up by that person and if anything they're actually threatening your own you know independence your own ability to be your own person and it feels really constricting this can be an influence libra sun's risings where you believe in yourself and take the risk in order to be on your own we think of jupiter in the seventh house we think of it like oh good times in connection but really it's a sort of energy where it's like if that connection is restricting you it can be where it's finally like okay i've got to choose freedom i've got to you know go elsewhere because with jupiter in the seventh house there's a lot more attention on us um there could feel to be a lot more suitors out there <laughs> so there can be this energy of optimism around one-to-one -one partnerships around realizing like i don't need to be in this connection that drains me i don't need to be in this connection where i don't feel like i could be my authentic self where i don't feel like i can be honest where i don't feel like my honest self is celebrated for some people they can leave the union this will not play out for every single libra sun arising just a couple of people who feel like that connection is constricting them and furthermore that they're not able to honor their authenticity and their truth within the connection because that's really what jupiter and aries is asking of all of us and if you're a single shoot your shot okay because this could be the time that you can find your soulmate but you have to take action right you have to be able to see that person you know at the yacht party i don't know why that's what came to my mind i don't know who's partying on a yacht maybe you are but and if you see someone who looks attractive like being willing to shoot your shot to like feel confident enough to go up to that person and be like hi didn't I? and like what's the worst that could happen they say no whatever life goes on but the best thing that could happen is that that could be your soulmate and you guys can start a project together and travel the world and have three kids and it could go amazingly right like with jupiter and aries it really is about being taking the risk and like imagining that they'll say yes but being fine if they say no you know what i mean like not sweating it too much because that's what success is it's trying and it's trying and it's trying and it's trying and it's trying obviously being respectful not you know harassing people but when it comes to any successful initiative any entrepreneur will tell you it takes like 10 doors slammed in your face until one finally will open for you. And with dating, you know, I want you to get more comfortable with rejection and shooting your shot, honestly, because you can really find really positive results during this time. My Scorpio suns and risings, Jupiter and Aries will activate your sixth house of day to day, of health, of daily routine and I know you're probably clicking off this video right away because six house can feel so boring at times but trust me it is not boring and it's gonna pay out dividends the time that you exert right now okay so listen up with Jupiter going through this sector you can yield really positive results if you attune to the minutia of your life I know your charts have been lit up like the 4th of July with all of the eclipses you have Saturn in your side you guys have been going through a lot and with Jupiter it's attuning your focus to the day-to-day -day. like if your life has been chaotic if you've already had your Saturn Uranus transits you could be feeling this energy around things have gone to the wayside you're not taking care of your body things could feel messy within your reality like with Jupiter in Aries it's really asking you right okay your dream life it's on the other side of you getting your stuff together essentially like you say that you want to be a director but you are not taking that time to practice filming daily you are not reaching out to connect with the right people daily like it's all about our daily efforts that lead up to the big picture and taking risks and being proactive as well as like our health goals it's like okay babe that you know dream 
body that we've been idealizing, you know, it's not just going to magically happen. It takes effort. It takes being proactive. It takes being energetic. I said this for the Aries portion too. I'm like, you know, attractiveness and taking care of yourself can be a weapon. And I say that to you guys because you guys are Mars ruled, so you get that. And it's also impacting sort of like healthy or bodily houses for you guys in that with Jupiter in Aries, you can find your magnetism really is, is rushes in when you are taking care of your body, when you are taking care of your mind, when you're taking care of your soul. Like when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you yield more positive results. So for some of you, you might not necessarily be interested in like changing your aesthetic appearance, but just wanting to feel better, right? Because sixth house is health. It is, you know, the food that puts in our body. It's the prevention of illness. For some of you who may have been struggling with health, this could be an influence around being more proactive around, okay, my doctor's not telling me anything. Let me seek out specialists. Let me do my own research. Let me alter my diet in these ways. It does ask us to be proactive as well as being proactive around any work situations. If you haven't been asserting yourself at work with your coworkers, this sort of energy where it's like, you know, asserting yourself like, Linda, I can't keep doing your job for you. <laughs> or for some, asserting yourself to get yourself in a better work situation. For some, you could be getting a new job during this, one that feels more expansive for you, but it's gonna ask you to put in that effort. Some people could be getting a pet during this time as six houses, small animals. But again, with Mars, we have to be proactive. We have to put in the energy. We have to make it happen. A little kitty cat isn't just gonna arrive at our doorstep, right? We have to do research. We have to get all this stuff. It asks us to take a assertive, proactive role, but the expansion will be immense, okay? You can find at the end of this, you're in a better, healthier body, that you're in a better workplace, that you have a solid daily routine where you're really taking the buckets of time to do all of the things that you want to do, to prioritize all of the things that you deeply do prioritize, but it's gonna take that effort and that action. And you've got this. Sagittarius sun or risings. So this is good news for you all because this transit will trine your Sagittarius placements and you are sensitive to Jupiter. You're enrolled by Jupiter love so that you're really moving into this lucky season of life, even though you're a Sagittarius. So you guys have more than your fair share of luck, but you guys are getting even more of it coming at you. And where it's particularly affecting you is when it comes to your creativity to your self-expression. So Sagittarians, this is really the time to put yourself out there in terms of your creative endeavors, love. Like put out that EP, seriously, during this time. Um, put out that novel, pitch, pitch, pitch your projects. Like you are getting this expansive energy. And yes, you might need to show up. You might need to take action. You need to pitch that project. You also need to show up to write the EP. You need to show up to sing the thing. You need to be able to get the studio time. Like it is asking you to be assertive and be proactive, but you can yield a lot of positive results from your art if you show up and do this. There are other manifestations of this. For some, it's gonna be this lovely invigoration of your inner child around really remembering what it is that lights you up. It's almost like this reinvigoration of just your lust for life, like remembering, wow, life's fun again. For some of you, there can be this connection with your inner child as Aries is sort of like the cosmic child of the zodiac. It's the first sign of the zodiac. So it kind of speaks to instinctively what just is fun. Like what, what we do not for it to look good, not for the prestige, not for the money, but just because it's fun. And with Jupiter in the fifth house, it could be this reminder around making your play and your pleasure at the center. And speaking of, fifth house is romance and dating. So this is the time to shoot your shot, particularly like romantically. Within fifth house, like seriously, put yourself out there, shoot your shot. Like if you see someone that you are attracted to, ask them out. Like with Jupiter and Aries, it is asking us to take calculated risks. And also with Jupiter and Aries, like not sweating it too much if someone does say no. If someone says no to your EP, someone says no to your date request, whatever, life goes on. Aries doesn't hold on to things too long. You know what I mean? They, they, they act when they feel the instinct to, and then they let it go. They don't stew on their anger. They don't stew on their rejection. They just let it go. So if you know someone says no, like any creative will tell you, it takes so many doors slammed in your face for the right person to finally see your stuff, right? So being willing to have doors slammed in your face, being willing to post you know TikTok videos of you singing, even if a bunch of them don't get picked up by the algorithm, some will. With Jupiter in fifth house, 
Like things can go very well for us, but it takes us showing up and being bold and being courageous. Fifth house is also children. So if you've been having any fertility issues, this could be a really positive time around seeking answers with Mars. It does ask us to be more proactive. So this can be an influence where it's like, okay, I need to be proactive. I need to see a specialist or for some, you can, you know, have children during this influence. It can be like a rush around libido, uh, romance in general. And there's just going to be this, this lovely feeling of just the lust for life, reconnecting to your inner child and just having more fun, Sagittarius for suns and risings. I do want to highlight that this is house of recreation and gambling. So with some Sagittarius suns and risings, you could feel more optimistic in this realm. Again, you can be luckier, but seriously with Jupiter, it's excess and you guys are more sensitive to excess. So please do not get carried away. Okay. Calculated risks, please. Capricorn suns or rising. So this is transiting your fourth house. So the house of home, family, and emotional state. So for some Capricorn suns and risings, if you've been looking for the right place to live or you've been wanting to move, this can be a really positive time to buy property or to find new property because, but it's gonna ask you to be proactive about it. Like this is sort of energy where it's like, I've applied to every single apartment in NYC, but I'm still going to apply and follow up with this broker. Like it's about being proactive and being you know diligent in order to be in our dream apartment, right? Um, for some, you don't necessarily have to move or put an offer to a house, but you can find that it does yield positive results, that you are more lucky in your housing search, that you are in the right place at the right time, as long as you are taking action, going to those open houses, talking to those brokers, doing you know your legwork. For some who are not moving, this could be a really expansive time around finally doing a renovation project within your physical home, maybe painting, making it more homey. For some, with Jupiter in the fourth house, there can be this energy of freedom found in the home unit. So if you have a roommate who just drains every ounce of everything from you. This could be the influence where you are able to free yourself from a living situation that is not serving you. You could be able to just emotionally regulate yourself better. There can be this freeing feeling around being able to honor your truth to an emotional level and perhaps even like enforce boundaries or be honest with family members um, because Jupiter in the fourth house, it does bring up familial themes. And for some, your family could be expanding in some way or you can get closer to them. For some, honestly, it could be an expansion of your truth to your family members. So it's like, I'm sick of biting my tongue. It's time for me to hold my ground and assert and advocate for myself to my family members. For some, you could be doing this work around any messaging from your, your family or even like your ancestry and how that echoes into how you emotionally and conduct yourself now and finding this like almost like a weight lifting around doing this deep inner work around how you emotionally regulate yourself in order to find a more like peaceful existence or being able to regulate your emotions with more ease, something of the nature. And with Jupiter in the fourth house, just really taking that time to feel your emotions, make peace with your anger as well. With Jupiter in Aries, a lot of that can be coming to the surface, but again, feel it to heal it. There can be an expansion around certain family messaging or certain, you know, ancestral patterns or things of the nature. Let it come to the surface so that you can let it go and make peace with it. And as well as making peace with your anger, like there's nothing wrong with anger. And for some reason, the word that's coming to my mind is like sacred rage. Like there's nothing wrong with anger. For some, it's actually a step up on the vibrational scale. So for some of you, there could be this energy around finding different outlets for making peace with your anger, as well as just having this expansion within your emotions and realizing it's okay to feel, you know, with Capricorn suns and risings, you all can feel like you always need to be the strong one, have it together. And what you put in the fourth house, it's sort of granting you this permission in order to feel safe to feel as well as safe in your home. So for some decorating it, for some maybe establishing a safe space, for some maybe, you know, getting to say goodbye to a noisy neighbor or a roommate who drains you. Something about the home private reality is having this weight lifted and you're gonna feel more expansive and balanced as a result. My Aquarius suns or risings, this influence is occurring in your third house, in houses or in solar houses. And third house is communication, it is the mind. And with this influence in your third house, you can find this is a really great time around being proactive, around securing the education or the certifications that you are in interested in. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to be a fitness instructor. I've always wanted to be a yoga trainer. This would be such a great time to do that, to supply, you know, 
the mind, third house, with Mars-like activities, with Jupiter in Aries answering to Mars. That would be so, so supportive. So seriously, any Aquarius suns or risings out there who want to get their fitness certs, great time to do that. Also, anything related to Mars in general. So even if you don't necessarily want to get certified, maybe getting into you know new fitness classes, maybe learning more about Mars-like themes, learning more how to assert yourself, learning more how to make peace with your anger. And it really just expands the mind in general. So you can be more inclined to want to read more, want to study more, want to learn more. You could be writing more for some Aquarius suns and risings. You could be being pushed to like shoot your shot in terms of putting your writing out there, sharing more on social media, sharing via podcast, sharing via a blog, the relationships between you and your siblings or your extended family like cousins can be improved during this influence again with jupiter and aries there can be you know truths that need to be acknowledged like with jupiter and aries around you know being honest with your siblings or honest with your extended family members but again with jupiter there it's a very expansive energy so if there's been any drama there this can be a, a year in which that beef is squashed essentially some could be getting a new car during this influence which is very exciting some can feel this rush around short-term short-term journeys being able to go more places or to feel a little bit more free and traveling transportation issues can resolve itself definitely watch road rage during this influence because jupiter expands what it goes through for better and for worse and it can definitely expand any sort of road rage while you're on the road but transportation issues can be resolved and supported and really with jupiter in third house i really just want you to hone and speak your truth honestly like if there are certain truths about yourself or about your life or about your authenticity that you've been you know holding on to this is sort of influence to speak your mind like you know you don't need every single person to like you and you know that you're an aquarius sun and rising you march the beat of your own drum anyway but whether it's like being more truthful online, like being more authentic online, or if there are certain connections where it's like, I'm not speaking my truth, I'm not speaking what it is that I need, I'm not speaking what it is that I know deep down, like my instincts are telling me this, this can be a time to refine your communication skills, maybe take a writing class, maybe take a conscious communication class, wherever that could show up for you, and really just in your connections and online, really speak what is on your mind and know that you are not for everyone. Right? but lying is a form of self-betrayal, right? And so it's really important to thine own self be true, that you speak up if something is making you uncomfortable, if someone is making you play a certain role or you're unsatisfied with a certain dynamic within a connection, like this is an influence that really supports you speaking your truth within it, as well as taking a risk when it comes to sharing your, your truth. So writing, podcasting, blogging about your truth, again, there could be some people who disagree, but your message isn't for everyone, okay? You're an Aquarius sun arising if you're having this transit, most likely. So you are meant to walk your own path in life. Like if you water down your message so that everyone likes it, it's so watery, you can barely taste anything at all, right? <laughs> My Pisces suns are rising. This transit impacts your second house, which is money that you earn as well as self-worth. And loves, I'm so excited for this for you because I do feel like this is gonna be this rush of confident energy around realizing your value. So for some of you, you can be upping your prices around I know I'm worth more than this. I need to up my rates. If you're at a business or asking for that raise, believing in yourself, taking action. And yes, this is a money house. So yes, Pisces, Suns, and Risings will be will be receiving more money during this influence. However, what I want you to be conscious of is that money is just one echo of second house themes in that Jupiter in second house expands our own value of ourself. It expands our own self-worth or self-confidence, how we value ourselves, And it's like, yeah, money echoes into that because it's like how I value an hour of my time is how I'm gonna set my prices. But this could be a really powerful time around realizing the value that you you provide to everyone within your world and stop underselling yourself, stop undervaluing yourself, taking up space and being okay with that Pisces, Suns, or Risings. And with the money talk, yes, raise your prices, yes, start requiring more money, look for ways to expand your income, be proactive around, you've always wanna start this business. The Cosmos are supporting you in allowing more money to be magnetized towards you because you deserve it. And I want you to work on feeling worthy of receiving it, okay? Because that's a lot of times that we can block our blessings around like me and just be like, yep, 
I deserve this. This, you know, I brought this value into this individual's life and I deserve to be compensated for such. What I want you to be mindful of, because Pisces, you all are ruled by Jupiter. So you guys are more sensitive to Jupiter and Jupiter expands what it goes through. And with it in money, it expands money coming in. So yes, more money coming to you via income sources, via your own efforts with it in Aries in the second house with a raise, but also increases money going out. Be very mindful of lifestyle creep, especially with this Mars rule Jupiter. This could be a time when you are impulsively spending more money. Yeah, let's go to Vegas, whatever, just book it. Yeah, I need those shoes, let me just get it. I got a raise, it's fine. Where it's like, you don't even see the extra money that you're making because it just leaves your account right when it comes in. I want you to be so conscious of it because with Jupiter in second house, we can get a lot more money coming in, but a lot more money can still be going out. So I want you to, you to really give every dollar a job, like these dollars, their job is savings. These dollars, their job is investments. These dollars, yes, you do deserve to treat yourself like if you wanna save and get those boots. I'm not saying you can't buy yourself nice things because that can be part of the journey for many Pisces suns and risings, but I just want you to be really conscious of your budget and I want you to put that expanded income into stuff so that you're not at the end of this transit like, girl, where did that money come from? And seriously, Pisces suns and risings, my best advice for this is be bold, know your worth, okay? Be proactive about starting that new income source starting that new business, asking for that raise, looking for new ways to make your money work for you rather than you always working for money, and really feel confident about yourself. This is a really beautiful time. And yes, with Jupiter expanding the second house, you can buy some possessions during this time that you really love, that genuinely add value to your life. But I just want you to be conscious, know your numbers as you go into it, so you can really maximize this cosmic support and this cosmic rush of abundance. So loves, I am so excited about this transit. Let me know below what you are looking forward to it. I would love to know which parts resonated, what parts you're gonna activate, because again, this is the latent energy. For many, this trans transit could come and go and they don't even notice it because it is Aries, which requires our action. It requires us following our instincts. It requires us taking your risks. So for those who lean into this influence, it'll pay out dividends. So that's what I'm encouraging you all to do. Let me know where you're gonna take your calculated risks during this transit. Love, my Instagram handle is at Haley Common Astrology. My TikTok is the same. I would love to connect with you over there. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay cosmic.